Olo, fellow moving loving humans. Hello. Oh. Oh, right. Hello? Is that how you say it? Yes, like that. Okay. It's a well, long movie. <laughs> uh, but... Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the latest installment of the Nerdvana podcast. I I am John Murphy, uh, along along with my co-host Ian Benoit, and return and returning because he because he demanded it. Tyler Tyson. I told I told him we're go- I told him that we were going to talk about AVP, and he just went, "I got to be part of that." <laughs> there's so much there's so much stuff to talk about AVB not just a film just that just as uh, just part as part of the franchise as a crossover well franchise crossover um, you wouldn't even believe where it got the start like besides the comic books mm-hmm. like it first got real life in the video games 90s mm-hmm yeah, I re- yeah, I remember uh, the ner- I remember the nerd re- uh, briefly uh, going over the video game for the Atari Jaguar. Wow, what a piece of shit that was! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like, you know, it's like there's like a long history with AVP. Got you no know, comic books from just 1990, right after like Predator Two. Which, let's be fair, Predator Two is the reason everything happened. Actually, the comic came yeah. out. Bef- the comic came out before Predator Two. Or was it tied in? Was it Predator Two? No, it wasn't tied in. It was just an. It was just an Easter egg nod. Hmm. But yeah. Any. But anyway, yes. Uh, Alien vs. Predator, uh, released in two thousand four, directed by T- uh, Paul W S Anderson, is. Uh. The- <laughs> <laughs> yes, he's. I don't know much about him, but I know he apparently has quite a reputation in the film community. Although, to be to be fair, when you compare his body of work to what's currently being pumped out by Hollywood, it's harmless. It's more or less that you have a coin toss whether or not it's good. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that's at least fifty percent chance. So it, yeah, it's a fifty-fifty. Uh, yeah, uh, he made Mortal Kombat, one of the earliest video game movies of the '90s, which we bre- which uh, we did talk about in our video game movie curse episode. Yep, and, and he also did Resident Evil. He's more famous for Resident for the Resident Evil movies. Yeah, but anyway. No. But you cannot discount uh, Event Horizon. I think that might be too. I think that might be too much for me. <laughs> yeah, that's honestly one of his better works. I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of liking I'm liking Alien vs Predator. But it's a good it's a good second one though. Yeah, but but either way, yeah, uh, Alien vs Predator it. <laughs> Uh, it's actually ba- based off a very com- very famous uh, line of comics that featured these two icon icons of uh, sci-fi horror. And um, and yes, uh, uh, something Kent has pretty much been in develop in development hell about by about the '90s and only finally and finally getting off the gr- getting off the ground. To... What was the reason for development hell? Probably, probably because they couldn't find it. They couldn't find a, a director, or they just—I guess the studio execs weren't impressed with any of the pitches. Well, I understand why Freddy vs. Jason was in development hell. That was two different companies. Yeah. Like this AVP is owned by Fox. Oh. Yes. So well, here, here's the kind of thing. I guess. A, Initially, it was supposed to be the fifth, a- the fifth Alien movie, but we'll we'll kind of get we'll kind of get to that later because there's obvious there's some fasc- there's some fascinating things, uh, but, uh, just about this crossover, even just behind the scenes, that that seems to affect the future of the Alien franchise. But again, yeah. yes, but again, we'll get to that later. 
what is so what so if you haven't seen alien versus predator on, honestly i think it's i it's definitely worth a watch it's pretty much a, it's pretty much about how uh, some scientists investig investigate a strange heat, heat source in one of the most isolated areas in the antarctic and only to re only to find themselves caught in the middle of of a of a war that initially just started out as a, as a ritual between two uh, two extraterrestrials that whose only purpose are to ki are to kill at least one has a coat of honor yes mm -hmm. it, let's see um it features leading it features leading actress and i'm really sorry if i'm not pronouncing this name cor correctly uh sana lathan uh, in the title role of Alexa Wood, of Alexa Woods, and and also and also features the return the return of Lance Henriksen. Yeah. Oh no, John's gone robot. <laughs> Lance Henriksen as the, as Charles Bishop Waylands, the ancestor of uh, the ancestor of essentially. Uh, uh, Bishop Whalen from Alien Three and the developer of the bit of the Bishop Android. Actually, all the androids done uh, made by the company in the Alien franchise. Who die? Who dies in this movie? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, that's not that's not gonna be confusing. But any, anyway. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, how honestly, I kind of remember seeing posters for this movie, uh, in theaters and honestly being very scared, honestly being very scared. I mean, just, just the poster alone, like the one behind Ian, it was enough. It was enough to make me go, no, I don't want to see that. <laughs> but it did give me kind of it did get me curious about these two when I found out that they were part of diff they were part of different movie lines and so that actually got me curious so it led so it led me to the Alien and Predator movies let's be fair like the the fights in this movie were just spectacular yeah it was yeah Honestly, like one of my favorite moments is Gridhead. <laughs> the formation of Gridhead. Yeah. Only yeah, escaping this... because of his acid blood. Yeah. So this movie does have whether regardless of your feelings to this movie, you can kind of admit that there are some there are some there are some nice ideas in this movie that kind of that kind of expand that just expand the world of aliens and predators. I, I not to mention a cliffhanger that made you go, "Oh my god, what's going to happen next?" Only to give you the biggest letdown. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to, but we'll get to that later. Uh, yeah, I really, yeah, uh, yeah, I like the idea that th there's finally an alien that's actually distinguishable. Right? Yeah. Like, they all look identical, so you can never know who's who. Yeah, unless, right. Well, you do know, like, the difference between, you know, drones, runners, and I guess, I guess, generals, the ones where, with the actual written, the rich heads, and, of course, the queen. Of course. But there's, def there's definitely something about, about actually individual, there's something about finding, seeking the individual among among that crowd. Oh, he really does he really does stand out and I'm kind of glad for that. One of, one of the interesting things was like they made a good, they did a good job of portraying that the predators are not invincible. Mhm. Mm <laughs> it well, one got too cocky. One one uh, one xenomorph dis was able to kill off two. Was able to kill off two predators. And it's funny enough is that this movie has been 
criticized for 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 showing favoritism to the xenomorph to the xenomorphs. Oh no, they still got their butts kicked. It, yeah. Well, well, uh, the director actually is a was more of a fan more of a fan of the aliens, but at least there's kind of a reason why why the xenomorphs seem to seem to easily overpower predators. I mean, these are essentially novices. Yeah, that's, yeah. it's a rookie ritual. Mm-hmm. Now, you kill your first alien, you're an adult. Which, expanding the predator lore. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, all right, so... Well, I gotta uh, love it when it gives reasoning. So, uh, so Tyler, uh, have you actually watched? Have you rewatched it recently, or is it, or do you just remember it in great detail? Um, uh, I just remember a lot of it in great de- details. Though I'll, I'll, I'm not gonna lie, uh, characters do not give them memorable names. Oh, okay. besides, besides Waylon. Uh, all right. So, did you know there's actually? So, do you? Eh, so do you know there's two versions of of Alien vs. Predator? No. Which ones? There's the PG-13 one. Okay. And then there's the unrated one. Is there a difference? Yes, there's some additional yeah. scene. There's some additional scenes. And uh, which kind of uh, which kind of actually show which actually kind of expand it shows some characterization to them some characterization and well i don't know kind of because it's the because it's the 2000s kind of some some obvious digital blood effects some additional blood for gore yeah yeah but not that much scenes Uh, about eight minutes that's not much No, it's not. No, no. But honestly, I kind of like the unrated version because for the for the storytelling aspect, it kind of, like I said, it definitely change. It turns these characters from stereotypes to actually actual people. I want to ask you mm-hmm. one important question: Who had the worst death? Who had who had the worst death? Who had the worst death? Mm. Because between I don't know some of the tools that the predators use that <laughs> net. Mm. Mm-hmm. Nets. Mm. I I don't know. Well, I feel kind of bad for the for the Scottish guy. You know, with the one with the kids. Yeah. Yeah, because. Mostly because he he had a fault he had there was a false sense of safety. It's like ah oh, yes ah oh, I said ah oh, yes I killed I killed one of those things I'm safe. Oh there's more. Yep. That that was oh man that hurts. Mm-hmm. But uh, honestly, it's like they did a really good job pulling. Not pulling his punches that no one, no one on the human side was safe. I know. Even the, yeah, even the CEO, who's who's supposed to be, who is whose name is makes is kind of important to the to the Alien franchise. Oh, what? Okay, what thing? What? Ian, you've got. Yeah, you, Ian, you've kind of been silent <laughs> a little bit. I have. I had a long day. <laughs> yeah, had quite a long. Yeah, a long day. Yeah, you told me you were you almost you were leading. Oh, I'm sorry, bleeding. You were bleeding. Yeah, and it was also Memorial Day. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. And since everybody had off, they all came to the park. Of course. Oh. They came, they came to the park. Did they see the the Tyrannosaurus or the Brachiosaurus? No, they harassed me and crowded around me, and you know we're stupid. Mm. What's the Velociraptors? 
Dilophosauruses? It would make much, it would make my life much easier if we had those. <laughs> it would take care of the problem. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. But this movie really, I heard about the reputation of AVP way back in high school when I was first getting into the Alien franchise. I heard about how bad AVP was, and then Prometheus came out. <laughs> <laughs> So everybody, now I noticed that a tonal shift occurred. So I'm like, huh. So around, you know, 2017, when Covenant came out, I started watching the Alien movies and I immediately fell in love. If you've seen the reviews, mm -hmm. you know that. And and for those who, and for those of you listening, uh, links to, there are links to uh, all of our past uh, uh, podcasts talking about the Alien and Predator movies up to this point. Yeah. And this movie turned in... Uh, this movie is the culmination of that because I love the Alien franchise. I still hold Alien Isolation as the best Alien story bar the first two movies. So honestly, that's not hard to beat. <laughs> no, that's not hard to beat. <laughs> Uh, and I really enjoy the two Predator movies I've seen. I can't the wait till two? we hit Prey. Yeah, the first two. I can't wait till we watch Prey. Mm -hmm. But this movie is, despite its reputation, it's still really enjoyable. As long as you don't take it super seriously. Yeah, honestly, I kind of put this movie as... I, I would... Uh, categorize this as a cult movie. Yeah, definitely. Because I, uh, when you kind of th when you kind of think about it, this it is mostly an alien movie, and it's kind of the and it's kind of the best best one of the of the, in the alien line after after aliens. That's not hard to do. It's not. It actually it is kind of hard to do. I mean, so far you have Alien, Alien Three, and then Alien Resurrection. Which side note, that's still one of our one of the my favorite intros that we've done, that we've done on this podcast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then you have, uh... but you have Alien versus Predator, which honestly, I think I think in terms of the of the Alien movies, you know prior this kind of this kind of this uh, kind of holds up to them honestly it does in a way of it kind of gives off that actual classic horror movie vibe of yeah you're not on a spaceship but you're in an isolated arctic mm -hmm. no underground pretty... huh underground underground <laughs> underground so there's a bit of claustrophobic, uh, claustrophobic there. Yeah, and it is pretty. Uh, unlike, at least unlike Re Requiem, we can see everything. <laughs> Hold your horses we'll on there. Requiem. <laughs> we'll get there. Yes, we will. But uh, yeah, it yeah, it's not as bleak as number three, and not as. Over, as like over the top silly as as resurrection grenade bowling yeah <laughs> oh god <laughs> but it but there still are some there still are some flaws in there there's still it still has some flaws but honestly story story wise tone this is a this is a pretty this is a pretty good worthy this is pretty good in terms of aliens and even this when it comes to the aliens i mean hell i mean you even have you have alexa woods who franchise wise production wise is a very i consider a very good spiritual successor to ellen ripley 
He survived not only Xenomorph, but Predators. Mm hmm. Like, damn. Yeah, and, and she also, ended up teaming up with one of the predators, and ended up oh, yeah. and ended up uh, earning earning the mark the mark of the blooded. Yep. So yeah, I wish she I wish she appeared in in uh, more in more of those movies. I always wonder what happened to her after the movie. Does she even have a ride off the uh, of the Arctic? Yeah, I think I. Yeah, I think uh, there was a ve There was still a vehicle uh, nearby where she was standing after the after the pre after the aliens, you know, the predators. I mean, uh, flew uh, flew off. Plus, there still should yeah. still be some people on the ship. Yeah. How's she gonna explain that one? I don't think she would because what like what do you say to that? How do you explain that to people? Right? Well like, they, I'm sure they would have heard the overall collapse and ensuing explosion. Yeah. Like, also also the fact that the CEO also, she returned, and the CEO didn't. Implications. Mm-hmm. Oof. You know in the real world, there would be a giant investigation over this thing, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, no, there would be. Which, again, kind of... Which, again, kind of helps us establish why... Uh, why in the in the alien universe, especially in in the sequ in the sequel in the sequel Aliens, how the company uh, has no has no record of of a xenomorph. There's like no, there's no. It would actually be kind of it would be kind of interesting. Yeah. So, like, so that kind of so instead of you know outright. Tell, telling us or showing us what happened. I mean, we it's left to us to kind of figure out which that's if it's done if a movie does that right, it's pretty good. But uh no, at least the conversation between the people were entertaining while we're waiting for the inevitable bloodbath. Yeah. Uh, which ones are you thinking? Um, the one between Alexa and that head security girl. Oh yeah. Yes, the yes the the, the gun lady. Yeah, the gun lady. Where she compares having guns to condoms, it's better to have one than and not need it than not having one and needing it. Yeah, you Half can kind of. Yeah. I mean, it. I mean, it doesn't have to solely be condoms. I mean, it can be pretty much. Any, it can you can apply that to anything else? Well, I know, but I thought that was the weirdest thing that she compared it to. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, well, that certainly sticks. Yeah, that. So that's weirder than the whole Moses's DVD collection comparison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, that that takes the cake though. It do, that does take the cake. Honestly, that was the, actually that was the best. I think that was one of the best lines in the movie. It was, it was like, yeah, I mean, you okay? You're in an ancient pyramid, and you see these metallic, futuristic-looking things that should not be here. It is kind of like finding Moses's grave and having a collection of DVDs. Right. Mm-hmm. What do you think would be on his DVDs? All the times he smoked the bush. <laughs> and his conversations with God while uh, high. Uh, prob probably some movie, probably some National Lampoon movies. Probably. Hopefully Alien. <laughs> uh, Alien in the ancient times. Uh, oh no, oh no, wait, he would probably have Ben-Hur. Ah, yes. 
That's a and throwback. The Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> <laughs> and and Cleopatra. Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. Um. Uh, yeah. And okay. Bishop uh, Charles Bishop Whalen, who's funding the expedition. Of course, played by Lan- and again played by Lance Hendrickson. Well, honestly, he is a very odd individual in the fact that he's a CEO, but still feel like he hasn't made a mark on the world. Mm-hmm. I think what's fun- know- oh, go ahead. No, no, go on. Go on. I was gonna say what's kind of interesting is that he's a CEO, but he doesn't really he doesn't act like what we think is a C is a CEO. Yeah. He's kind of an odd one. He's kind of odd. He's honestly kind of a kind of a decent guy. Yeah. Just try and picture like his whoever's running Wailing Yutani has to be complete utter dicks compared to this guy. Well, including, oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. including his descendants. I mean, you. I mean, perfect example of real, uh, the real world. Sam Walton and his sons. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. The ones that, the ones that created Walmart. Which eventually bought out Wailing Yutani. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, wait, was that... Alien... Oh. In R- Resurrection, oh, Wayland yeah. Yutani was bought out by Walmart. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Forgot See, about that. See, Walmart's up to no good. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I mean... As... Honestly, we Wayland and uh, and Le- and Lex, you know the lead the lead uh, the leading heroine, they're my favorite characters in the whole movie. They're oh really yeah, they actually characters. have a lot. Yeah, I mean there's, I mean there's a lot of personality to them. There's a there's a nice there's a very nice interaction between between them when it come when it comes to when she discovers that when she discovers that uh, that Waylon ha- uh, uses an inhaler because his lungs aren't so good that's one hell of an inhaler mm-hmm. I know right best money you can buy I suppose uh-huh <laughs> <laughs> but, but even though but really what he and really, he's doing this because he want because like he, like someone mentioned earlier that he wanted to leave his he wants to leave his mark when he when he's gone. Any other memorable characters besides Waylon and Alexa? Well, I well I like Sebastian the archaeologist. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I think okay, so yeah, we're introduced to him from an archaeological dig in Mexico, and uh, apparently they have they're trying to find I don't I don't know the tomb of one of one of uh, one of the the emperor the emperors over there, and uh, he ends up find, finding a Pepsi bottle cap. <laughs> That's honestly funny. It it is honestly it is funny. And honestly, relatable because I've done some archaeological work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of wondering how did a, how did a bottle cap get, get there, at that spot, besides littering. besides littering, besides littering. Oh. <laughs> Airplanes. Oh, like in, oh, they dropped them from the airplanes, like, uh, like drug lords did, with their cocaine. Well, well Coke like... used to have cocaine in it, so maybe. <laughs> probably. Yeah, but this was Pepsi. You don't know what Pepsi's been up to. Hmm. I don't know. Or maybe or maybe the maybe the ancients really did have did uh 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 have a have a brew that was strangely like like Pepsi and they bottled it. I mean I'm pretty sure Colton I'm 
Maybe they harness the power of cola nuts. Uh, but, uh, For some reason, that just brings up colonoscopy, and I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, don't need that. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, the, uh, the, reason why, the reason why I, the reason why I liked him is because in the unrated version, there's a there's a special interaction with uh, him between him and his camera guy, where they where they the check that they received, you know, to fund their dig. You know, cameraman says that the check has been cleared, and and uh, Sebastian goes, all right, uh, we'll we'll hear what he has to say, we'll politely decline, and then we'll then we'll. And it's off to Mexico. And then comes the greatest discovery of our time. Yeah, the greatest discovery. Yes, the greatest discovery, as implausible as it is. Yep. Poor Sebastian. You should have denied it. Mm-hmm. Should have denied it, but the, but that's but the but the possibility of a of the a greatest discovery was too great. And honestly. That makes him, that makes him more human. It can, it doesn't make him a stereotype as some as some critics or some reviewers have have uh, have stated when it comes to the theatrical version. Also, it is kind of it is kind of funny that he still keeps the bo- the bottle cap as a good luck charm. Right, I love that. Gives him more it, you know three dimensions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it's subtle enough that it's not in your face characterization, but those tiny little hints of character underlying what you're seeing, that's how you do characterization really well. Let's see. Honestly, I'm not remembering any other characters other than the white security chick. And no, we all know how she went out uh-huh. with a bang. Uh, no. Yeah, a, crack. A, bang, a bang through her chest. Yep. I think that is kind of one of my little nit. One of my little nitpicks about this is that that uh, the the way the face huggers seem to impregnate their victims too fast because in. In the move, in the previous movies, and don't I don't want to get too confusing. When I say previous movies, I mean in the original Alien franchise. There, I'm. It takes about a day. And here it is. If you're complaining about this, just wait, dude. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, it takes about a day, and also, and I do kind of have to agree. I think the chestburster scene was a little was a little weak. Yeah. Well, we've seen it before. We know what's going to happen. I guess that's true. We, we I know guess their that's, fate. That's true. I mean, everybody knows that at this point. It was lampooned in Spaceball. <laughs> <laughs> so, before the chest uh, face huggers come out of eggs, what room was this again? The patrol room. <laughs> the sacrificial chamber. <laughs> Am I the only one that whenever I see a chest burster, I always think of the... You know those party blowers that go... I just think of that now. Every time I see a chest burster. I, I never thought that, but now I am. <laughs> Chest bursting magic trick. <laughs> or like those party blowers, you know that yeah. that curl that cur- that curl up. Yeah, that's what I'm referring to. <laughs> oh, those. No, okay. Yeah. I thought you meant like the party poppers, the one that the one that goes bang when you pull a string. No, that's when a xenomorph tail goes stabbing through you. Oh, uh, oh, like, oh yeah, like. <laughs> Oh yeah, like the like it did the predator. Or Bishop in <laughs> Aliens. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanna I wish we saw more of that. I mean they've got this big tail and we saw some of it, but I feel like they could do more with mm-hmm. their tail. 
Well, I think well they were still you well they still relied on on a pup on the puppet for the for the queen but what I do know is that it it was honestly it, according to IMDb it was the most sophisticated animatronic ever built at that time even having twice as many joints as the T-Rex from Jurassic Park damn mm-hmm I want your guys' thoughts on the sets of that archaeological dig. What do you think of the like, interior? Uh, the interior of the pyramid. Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was pretty good. It's it's different, but definitely gives that claustrophobia feeling, like the from the original Alien movies. Mm-hmm. Or did it just feel too like uh, Brendan Fraser mummy? Honestly, I did not think of that. Okay. I have not seen that movie, so I couldn't draw that comparison. <laughs> All I know is, like, it was it was the, probably the most unique architecture I've seen for a pyramid. Mm-hmm. And the walls move. The wall. The walls are. The walls are closing in. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, yeah. What did you guys think about the cinematography? Honestly, yeah, there's was... there's just a lot. There's some beautiful imagery for uh, in in this uh, in this movie. There are some shots that really stand out. Yeah, there's a, a lot of things that stand out. It was a it was really cool. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I think I think my fav I think my favorite shot is. Uh, when they're walking through the abandoned whaling station, and it and it's just uh, and it's just illuminated by the the red the glow of the emergency flare. I love that little. Oh, I like that overhead shot, like one of the like one of the earlier overhead shots where they're exploring where they're exploring it. I got Jurassic Park vibes. You got Jurassic Park vibes. Well, flare. The flare? <laughs> Too bad there wasn't any flare to distract the queen. Oh, missed huh? opportunity. <laughs> oh, missed opportunity. Yes. Hi, 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 hi. <laughs> what did. Okay, so. You know what I'm. You know what I'm kind of realizing. Uh, so, in for the predators, they seem to only th- they only seem to thrive in in uh, hot environments. I mean, they're very, they're more active in those. Though it's kind of so it's kind of weird to have to have this place set in Antarctica, one of the coldest one of the coldest places in the world. Honestly, I hope there's actually an expansion on that because maybe they're not used to the cold. Hmm. You know, first Predator movie takes place in a freaking jungle in South Africa, or not uh, South America. Mm-hmm. Second movie takes place in a a heat wave in L.A. Uh huh. And freaking, I don't know. I never seen the Predator, but I know that. Uh, Predators. Well, a unique planet that's very jungle-like. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Haven't seen that yet. Okay. Uh, Ian, what? I mean, what did you think about? What did you think about this? The the whaling station. That's one of my favorite bits. I want. I wish we spent more time there. I mean, a bunch of dilapidated buildings that have been semi-frozen over with snow on the interior as well, because it's Antarctica and Mm -hmm. you're near the coast, so there's going to be a lot of wind. Uh, I feel like that would have been a good place to have a xenomorph fight against humans. Mm -hmm. Again, missed opportunity, but you know. Uh, Well, we come how close. I mean, we get... Close. I mean, the alien queen fight fights up up on the surface. 
Yeah, but I mean, imagine a bunch of xenomorph drones hunting their human quarry. Yeah, and before g- grabbing them and dragging them back down the tunnel. Yeah, look, I don't, yeah, I, I can understand that. Oh well, like, we'll just, oh well, we'll just have to imagine it from the alternate, from the extended opening in the unrated version. Yeah, in, uh... yeah, that, that's what I'm drawing on. Yeah, that. Yeah, the unrated version. Okay, so the theatrical one they mentioned how there was like a mass disappearance about at the place a hundred years ago, and in the unrated one, like just before the ti- before the title screen, we see, we see uh, that place a hundred years ago, and so I don't I don't really know how I feel about I don't know how I feel about it at at one point I. On one side, I mean, it's kind of, kind of, it was kind of, kind of best if they just left it as like, as just like a line of dialogue in the present. And on the other hand, I like kind of being, I like being shown, you know, kind of like a pre, a preview of coming attractions that would, that'll happen later in the movie. Yeah. Sorry, looking looking at looking at the Wikipedia page. Looking at the ah, uh, good Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Hey, right. so special effects, John? How did they hold up? Well, something. Well, pretty, because pretty well. It, pretty well, yes. Because something. Because it is mid two. It is mid two thousand. So, uh, so computer generated imagery wasn't wasn't quite wasn't at the level it is at now. But, but I think the good thing is that there's, is that it's not all CGI. I mean, there's a good, there's a good use of practical effects. Oh yeah, which I'm I, pretty sure. I, which that's that's the type of method that I love. I love mixing practical with digital effects. I'm pretty sure the face huggers were pulled by strings. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I love practical effects. You know, you said that the queen was the animatronic? Yes. Oh, man, I wish I could have seen that, like, the size of that thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's when it was, when it's running, that's, uh, when, that's when it's a digital effect. And you can, you can kind of, th- you can kind of see it. You can like see the digitalness. I don't really quite know how to explain it. Uncanny Valley. Yeah, yeah. I... Well, uh, xenomorph. <laughs> They're already uncanny. <laughs> no, no, it's uncanny with the eyes on the surface. What the eye? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about the human eye to see the texture of what's in front of them. I know. I'm giving you shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, what's everyone's favorite part from this movie? Ooh, that's a toughie. Oh, oh, then well, well, my favorite part is my. All right, then I guess I'll start out. My favorite part is uh b- when wait when Waylon gets killed from the pre- from the predator. Not because he was a bad. Not because he's a bad guy. No, 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 no. Because. It was, it honestly, it was a pretty, it was a really good scene that kind of showed, really extent of what of what their of what their code is. I mean, I mean, the, I mean this, I mean the predator had him by the throat, literally had him dead to rights, but spared him when he found when he found out that there were that there were polyps in his lungs. And so, so spares him, walks up, walks away because, because honestly, it's not, it's not a worthy hunt. Waylon, dis- Waylon, t- uh, decides, you know, pretty much just states, "Don't turn your back on me." Like he, like he's got something to prove. So he takes a flare and his inhaler and makes a makeshift flamethrower, and and shoots fire. 
at his at the predator's back. And the predator and and the predator apparently apparently, apparently that means that it's good enough it is good enough for him to be killed. Well, he gave it a fighting chance. He gave it a fighting chance. Not only that, but I don't know if it was I don't know if it was because it was a fighting chance. I think it was because he, because the predator was essentially insulted. I mean, he sp he spared someone who was sick, and the and the person and the person who he showed mercy to just st literally stabbed him in the back. Okay, not literally, metaphorically stabbed him in the back. Spat on it. Spat on it. Yes. It's on. It sounds like Tyler's eating cookies. <laughs> Oh, it's just a bottle of water. Okay. Oh, <laughs> it was honestly, it's really, it's really cool. Just from, just from that inter, just from that interaction, you kind of that you see more of, of, of the of this predator code. We already knew <laughs> that it doesn't. We already knew it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't attack people if they're unarmed. It doesn't. It will spare. It'll spare spare people, uh, if they're if. Uh, especially female females if they're pregnant predator you know predator 2 of course and in this movie we find out it'll also spare the the, the sick mm -hmm. however if you disrespect if you disrespect if you spit if you reject its mercy all bets are off I honestly I like that. I I love that little bit that little bit of expansion lore. I love that little bit yeah. of world building just in that interaction. I do like to wonder if, if that's just based on the individual. Who knows? Because um there's some I'm not reading that the predator in the first predator movie was not opening traditional predator laws kind of like what you mentioned mm. hmm I forgot what it was but uh, I forgot what rules it was breaking like boldly okay uh, the sick or the injured uh, I would have to look it up but uh Apparently it's like a, a rogue kind of predator. Hmm. Uh, which, means like, <laughs> which means that, you no, know, it's definitely not like it's more of a cultural thing than anything. Hmm. Hold on, let me pull. Up. Google. <laughs> I'm looking it up, dude. I'm trying to find what you. Here we go. <laughs> uh, bad Bloods, Outcasts. Recognizing honor in others. Consequences of breaking the code. Anything, Ian? Various ranks. Uh, I'm not seeing anything from, you know, the movie Predator. Uh, let me t let me take a look at the uh, at the wiki, the wiki. The Xenopedia. Yeah, the Xenopedia. Jungle Hunter. Blooded, presumably. Affiliation, Jungle Hunter Clan, Renegade Predator. Oh. There we go. Let's 
let's see, personality and traits. Seems to enjoy toying with his prey, as is shown multiple times. He was, oh, here we go. He has an aggressive yet honorable personality, as shown during the fight with Dutch. He strict he strictly follows the ya the Yaucha, I don't know how you pronounce it, honor code. Yaucha. Yaucha, which is proven when he spares Anna, who's unarmed. And there's a link to, and there's a link to the honor code. Hmm. But yeah, it's called he's called Renegade. Uh, he called. I mean, he's called a renegade. I guess he. I guess he was just. I guess uh, he just went went rogue. Here we go. Huh. Let's see. Code violations. Those who break the code are bad bloods and are considered an insult. Hunting intelligent species. Hunting worthy game. Equalize the odds. Failing in the hunt. Claiming the claiming the kill of another hunter. Hmm. Show mercy. Those that defeated you in a fair hunt or who are the victors in a deadlier hunt should be considered an equal and must be shown respect. Oh, here we go. Never harm the innocent. Those who have done no harm should have no harm done to them. It can be inferred that this rule must pertain only to harming other Yaucha in their society since they hunt and kill members of many species one would call innocent. It can also be inferred that bad blood predators would ignore this rule either in part or in whole. Let's see, wounded game. Oh, here we go. When coming upon game wounded by another hunter and the prey is dying without sport, show honor to another's kill. If the game still shows sport, it is to be a joint trophy. Okay, that sort of, that sort of explains it. Yeah. Wasn't really from another from another hunt, but this, but uh, Wayland essentially was wounded or injured, was pretty much dying. But but he but I guess that that little uh, flamethrower attack showed that he was that he still showed sport. Yep. Wow, we get back to that. Mm -hmm. What a way to loop around. Yep. Yeah. But no, predator society is actually fascinating. Absolutely. Yeah, and honestly, it's through this that kind of I, if there actually was a battle, I would side with the predators. Yeah. Xenomorph knows no fear. No, have no honor. Unclouded by conscience. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, anything <laughs> else we want to discuss okay well I think well there is a there are a couple of things like so why so especially when it comes to this movie's place in canon and and I think, and uh, Tyler, I'm pretty sure you have a copious amount of notes about this. <laughs> uh. All right, but according to IMDb, there's and there's several. Uh, this was in development hell for uh, for years. It was a, initially going to be a fifth Alien movie. The exact uh, James Cameron, who actually wrote a script and approached uh, Sigourney Weaver. And even and uh, written to uh, uh, to star and and Ridley Scott to direct, which is weird because didn't Weaver didn't Weaver want uh, R Ripley to be killed off? Yeah, that's but, a bit weird. Yeah, but when the studio decided to you to make it a crossover, all three of them just decided to distance themselves and said that they. They declared they would never work on either franchise again. However, later, however, okay, they uh, both Scott and Cameron kind of describe dis dislike the idea of the crossover, dismissing it as quote uh, quote franchise milking, and I can kind of see that. Yeah, yeah. All right. When Scott was asked about his opinion on the finished film in 2007. He jokingly stated that he had to be careful not to damage his, quote, very nice relationship with 20th Century Fox, unquote. 
but implied that Fox was aware of his negative feelings for it. He even ad admitted later in 2012 that he never worked up the nerve to watch it, but later called it a daft idea. <laughs> Cameron, on the other hand, he actually admitted that he enjoyed it despite his, despite his earlier reservations, and he places it third on his favorite of the Alien movies. Oh. Ooh. So kind of so kind of hearing that kind of sheds a little bit light sheds a little bit of light on the on the Prome on the Prometheus series. I mean, I remember reading somewhere that uh, that Scott was kind of disappointed that the later alien sequels did not go did not go back uh, to the idea of that space jockey that they that the crew of the Nostromo found on LV426. And so that so that was something that he want so that was an idea that he wanted to that he wanted to explore. Not only that, but it seemed that his negative feelings towards AVP this is this is kind of what this is kind of what fueled making this the the official canon the official canon for uh, the prequel for the aliens mm. and the and the xenomorphs which i can i understand in some ways i kind of understand from a filmmaker's perspective Scott and Cameron, they come, they come from the, from, they were, they're both auteurs. They were, and they were, and they were successful during the age, during the age of the, of the auteur cinema. You know, the, the likes of Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, and Stan, Stanley Kubrick, and all the other ones. So these are, these are uh, directors that, that, the view their films as art and they and seeing that a crossover would be franchise milking it they kind of they in other words they feel that would that it would cheapen it would cheapen their work like it wouldn't that wouldn't make it unique and in some in some respects yeah if a if movies kind if a franchise does kind of go on too long they kind of they kind of lose what made them good to begin with you look at the Terminator. Terminator. You look at the Fast and Furious movies. Oh God, how many are we up to now? I th this is ten. Ten, ten yeah. Oh jeez. What well, actually? Those Fast and Furious in space. Uh huh. So, and, so Scott. So Scott kind of felt that that he that this one would not that uh, essentially bringing two bringing two these two film series together would kind of would kind of cheapen cheapen the uniqueness of Alien and and Cameron's own sequel. But but Cameron, on the other hand, everybody knows that Cameron is someone who always likes to, who always likes to raise the bar, who likes to think outside the box, to push boundaries. Just the fact that he that he places this third in in his favorite Alien movies we can probably guess what we can probably guess what the other two are. It's not that hard. Pretty sure the first one is yes. He it kind of shows that he it it kind of shows that his mindset is that uh, yes there is yes there the Alien movies and the Predator movies they're unique. In among themselves, but this crossover even creates something even more creates something even more unique. It creates it creates an even more unique experience. And because and because because it essentially thinks outside the box, it it kind of it kind of breaks new ground. Kind of a kind of a shame that he's not the one that he wasn't the one that uh, did, that took over the Alien franchise. Yeah, because yeah. when because you no, know, just just listening to that and listen and hearing like my thoughts, my 
my perspective on it does that doesn't that kind of make sense why why prometheus and by extension alien covenant exist yeah i and, and to your point john um in response to assuming that it's my opinion uh, old... it, it's my it's my opinion that's that's just my opinion on how the, on how these two these two uh, directors based on on how they reacted to this film yeah to your point there assuming that what you're saying is correct and you know what that's sim something similar to what they think their art still exists regardless yeah. of this film or future films existence or not the original masterpieces are still there if I if I were to make a copy of the Mona Lisa, but yeah, have Ellen Ripley in, instead, <laughs> which I'm, I, I guarantee that's online somewhere. Some, I'm sure someone's done that. And they made a they made the, a or, Saint they made Saint Saint uh, Ian Malcolm holding a baby, no, a small T Rex. I'm pretty sure they might have made Mona Ripley. <laughs> It, Mona it, Ripley it, sounds it, like an awesome idea. <laughs> uh, there are, regardless, even if that is quote unquote a bastardization of the original masterpiece, the original is still there. Yeah. Regardless of what you think about Fallen Kingdom, John, <laughs> <laughs> Jurassic Park is still there. Oh, yeah. I. <laughs> so it. That doesn't mean that it could have been done better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we're not talking about whether it could be done better. We're talking about its impact on the original masterpiece. Almost any film can have could have been done better. So, I don't think they're... I get where they would be coming from, but I don't think it holds much weight. Mm, I, don't, I don't know about... Um, and of what I'm in, what I'm inferring uh, of Ridley, uh, Ridley Scott's opinions on on that. I mean, he's well, he's entitled to his opinion. Oh, absolutely. Have, and I mean, I can understand why he's very protective of Alien. I completely understand that, but it still exists. Yes. So it, I don't know. I feel like they, despite their protectiveness of it, I do think that people have a have the right to take an idea and change it to do something different. As long as it, oh. as the changes are not too dramatic, that it's pretty much in, that it's insulting to a fan base. Absolutely, yeah. There, there is that. We're gonna and have I, to wait. You're gonna have to wait. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna have to wait 50 years for the public domain, then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although I'm pretty sure that might be changing again soon if it hasn't already. Um, I mean, um, Ian, yeah, just wait. I have wait. the right to make changes. I'm looking at Winnie the Pooh, the horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're joking. A friend and I joked about how Mickey Mouse will will soon enter the public domain. So now we're now we're then there must be the idea of Meth Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Hey, oh boy! <laughs> I am the one who knocks. <laughs> oh. When will Mickey Mouse be <laughs> in public? A Mickey Mouse will be in public domain next year. That's right, yes. <laughs> Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse. Steamboat Willie Mickey Mouse? Different iterations, kind of like how there's different... You know, Superman, copyrights is a bit funky. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> like, copy, Superman's is uh, public domain, but the Superman's in public domain can only leap in a single bound. Mmm, okay. Mmm. Now, if you try to do the one where it's flying, you're going to get a lovely little call from uh, DC Comics. Mm. <laughs> All right, but 
back on to back on track. So, given what I've said, all right. So, according to Ridley Scott, Prometheus is the is official can is the official canon. That's yeah, a, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. That is the true or that is the true origin of of xenomorphs. That it and the story of of Whale of Whalen Corporation becoming Whalen Utani Corporation. That is the and that is what which set the whole motion of Ellen Ripley and her crew on the Nostromo into the into the gates of hell. Again, I think both of these be poofed from existence. <laughs> I don't as uh Despite that, I have to I have to respectfully disagree. I have to respectfully disagree with with uh, Sir Scott. Not yeah. Because, as much as I like, go ahead, John. Because, on because honestly, he may Can I say he something? may have he may yes okay. Um, just because you're the creator does not mean that you should be the final word of God. It's funny. You may have invented something, an incredible something, but sometimes it's kind of like how it's kind of like the idea of you know how like uh, parents you know, who the, they get divorced, who did the kid go with? You go with the mom. She gave birth. <laughs> sometimes that's not a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> If I put money into a Coke machine and it gives me a Coke, does is it still the machines? By that uh, logic, John, we should all own aliens. Because <laughs> how much money have we all put into this franchise? <laughs> no, it's just but, it just reminded me of some of, of something I saw. And but regardless, a, pro a property gets better with new ideas from multiple people not just the, yeah, the original <laughs> creator in fact that's it was multiple ideas that created alien he, here's there's the thing tyler that you said scott created alien he was only a, he was only part of it he created the vi he created the visual scope of alien yeah he, he was the director the monster he didn't that was inspired by hp geiger he didn't make. He didn't. He didn't create the story, which was which was done by Dan O'Bannon and Bannon and uh, I forget. I forget the other guy's name. Uh, Shoot. Uh, Shuset. Ronald Shuset. There we go. They they're the re they're kind of the real pillars that that alien is that alien is built on. Yeah. You know, from you know, from the idea from the idea of an of a a parasite on a parasite uh, being born inside of a inside of a host body. But then you go to James Cameron, who brought something new to the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a completely different person. You know, and then there's now, uh, David Fincher, who added the idea of. The xenomorph taking the genetic code of their host, even if he, yeah. even though he wants to be he wants to be vastly removed from from that movie. Yes, and I understand, and that's because of studio interference mm -hmm. or executive interference or something. Un un respectfully, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, like, honestly, the idea will evolve because so many people it touches so many people that they're going to try to put, implement ideas that could make it better mm -hmm. and the and the other reason why mo most of us seem to disagree with with scott's uh, prequel series is because it got it kind of got rid it, it got rid of the mystique surrounding the xenomorph yeah the xenomorph is supposed to rep is supposed to be like a physical manifestation of everyone's fear of the unknown and sex and oh, and fear of sex. Well, if he if he know what if he know the unknown, then it's not scary. 
Yes. That was the whole, that was pretty much the whole point of of just the first two alien of the first two alien movies. Yeah. It, even the ship that even the ship that was carrying the carrying the eggs. No one no one knew where it no one knew where it came from. No one knew what was the whole, what was the whole point. And honestly, that it was that part. It stuck in our minds. Yeah, of course we don't know. We don't know the full story, but we know it. But we know it was there. Yeah, you don't need to know the full story, in in so far as Xenomorph. You don't need to know that. That's not the point. Yeah. It's much the more. The point is, they're the people trying to survive something that they don't have any freaking clue what it is. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it scary. They yes. have no clue. What are we up against? I don't know. Like, like second it's movie, Billy over we, there. Like second movie, we thought we knew the alien, but oh, 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 one alien is, is different. Mm hmm. But we're off track on AVP here. <laughs> I don't know. It it feels a little bit a little bit on track. I mean, cause to get bring it, but yeah, to bring, but it, to steer it kind of back is that I still I kind of see. I feel like this movie is should be canon, and I th and I think and I still consider it. Eh, I, I see your canon. point. I think I see it as a uh, it's fun. It's a fun romp. Oh yeah, it is. It is fun, but even just your even even just suspending your disbelief as much as much as you can. I know some. I know some of us have some of us have like that that uh uh. There's some parts of this movie that will just gr that will just grind our gears. This no matter how much we suspend our disbelief. Yeah. Don't have to point fingers, John. Oh. No. <laughs> oh, it's not just you. Not just you. Ian. I know there's it's not just you, and I know there's something about uh, about AVP that'll grind Tyler's gear. I just don't know what it is. Not really. I'm talking about the stupid timeline. What about the timeline? They say that you know Antarctica was recently ice oh, free. The, oh, that one. <laughs> Yeah. And geologically, that on the geologic time scale, yes. But the last time Antarctica was ice free was the Eocene, yeah. which is 35 million years ago. Yeah. I mean, even I mean, even a teenager that just pulls up a map. Let's see, Cambodia, Egypt, Aztec. Yeah, I can see that. Sure. There's a pier. There's. Apparently, unless the predators built it themselves, there is a lost civilization somewhere in, in Antarctica. <laughs> no, I sure. think they. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, that's too far reaching. Okay, for, if we assume that they built it themselves, they would have had to melt through. A I'm, and I'm estimating here a metric fuck ton of ice. <laughs> wow, is and that then a, is that an actual it? unit of measurement? Uh, informally, but you know. Okay. <laughs> and then um, and then once everything was good and good and done, and the pyramid was built, built, they put it back. <laughs> they put the ice back. <laughs> Okay, yeah. And apparently they had to re they had to re melt their hole down to the pyramid even though they were just there a hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so unless they they plugged that hole up. Okay. Okay. That that that's got to be my biggest gripe. You were literally just there. 
Yeah, okay, that part of it does still make it stupid, but I'm but the whole idea that this is tech this is the first human encounter with xenomorphs and that this is now and now this is technically the third predator movie and now there's only one survivor i mean that's still i mean that's the the that part of the time timeline you know from from predator yeah, no, to i'm alien. okay with that yeah i'm that, just looking at the logistics yes i know that's okay yeah that's yeah. Freaking put the ice back. What the hell? <laughs> I'm trying not to get upset about movies anymore, but that's just dumb. I, yeah. I mean, I mean, I've even I just pointed out how it's impossible that it's impossible that there that it could have been a civilization like smack dab in the middle of Egyptian, Aztec, and Cambodian uh, culture. Yeah, and it's in Antarctica, apparently. Mm-hmm. I mean... That's... that's and I'm like, okay, it's... Okay. That, it's, that's a little too much suspension of belief for me. <laughs> I can kind of... Understand. I mean, as much as I love AVP, it's just... Okay. Yeah, it's, at um, least they... Well, at least they don't constantly repeat. At least they don't constantly repeat that, so that you, yeah, they don't constantly. It's not you're not constantly reminded that, so that you can focus just on the aliens versus predators. Yes, yes. <laughs> nice light effect. That's a nice light effect. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very nice light effect. That's just a light from one of my snakes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll. <sighs> My hands hurt. <laughs> Snapping turtles. Yes. Mm. As much as I thought this was a handsome little boy, he did not appreciate my help. Mm. Do we have anything more to say on AVP? I don't. Well, I don't. I don't have anything more to say. None that I can. Th none that I can think of. Tyler, are you dead? I'm here. I'm here. I'm just thinking. I honestly got nothing else. Ratings? R uh, I guess I'll, I'll go first. Um, despite despite some of its despite some of its flaws, as well as the reputation of the director, I still I think a Alien vs Predator is all around an all around fun and entertaining movie, and and honestly it's not as it's not as bad as ever as everyone said it was i think no. i honestly it's definitely worth it's definitely worth a watch and if you're in and if you're up for it it's it's worth repeated viewings so i so i give uh so i give uh alien versus predator about seven or eight uh something uh, bl uh, blooded marks out of ten. Tyler, I give it a uh, seven trophy hunts out of ten. And d despite the hate I heard about this movie getting, watching it for myself, it. It's a fun romp. I mean, it, if you don't take it too seriously, it's fun. The characters, especially in the unrated version, are really good and a wonderful successor to Ellen Ripley. I have to agree with you both. I got to give it seven grid marks in an alien skull out of ten. <laughs> okay, and I guess with that, uh, we conclude uh, this uh, this installment of the Nirvana podcast. Uh, do let's see, do uh, j join us again next time. Uh, Ian, Ian, do you really think we should do something dinosaur dinosaur themed for next month?
Me thinks yes. Oh no! Wait, <laughs> we, wait. Redo that or do the drinking game? Because I'll do the drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> we should do a dinosaur theme thing. Whether it's have you get drunk and watch Fallen Kingdom, <laughs> which, that that would be a hoot and a half. Um, I don't know. We should we should do something dinosaur related for next month because it is the 30th anniversary of one of the greatest films of all time. The Land so, Before Time. I think that's over 30 years old, dude. <laughs> I'm giving you crap. I know you. I, know. Well, I give it to Tyler, and now you gotta give it to me. Uh-huh. Tyler, give him shit. <laughs> I give him shit on the daily. He does. <laughs> um, no, I, I've got a couple ideas. We could drag in my expertise of reptiles. Because dinosaurs have been in film for over 100 years now. Mm hmm. So, Slurposaurus? You can probably do the Slurposaurus. Yeah, they got. There's a whole TV trope page based on that's uh, dedicated to that. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a shit ton of research, but. And I'll do what I normally do not a lot of research. <laughs> just... well, that's what I normally do. <laughs> but since we're doing my field of expertise, I kind of have to. Uh-huh. <laughs> my reputation is on the line. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This isn't my reputation. My <laughs> reputation's five miles away. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Tyler, if you want to join us and talk about the history of dinosaurs in film, or, you're or welcome to, to. Or to get drunk with me watching Fallen Kingdom. We still haven't decided. We still haven't decided yet. I don't. I think we got to do Slurposaurus. I, I I can't have you two get drunk on here. Not yet, <laughs> at least. <laughs> I will have to think can... on that. Okay. Do you at least want to join us for Requiem? Requiem. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> I got a bone to pick with Requiem. Oh boy. Okay. Well, we'll keep you in mind when we do that. But it, at the very pr- least, it'll be me and John. Yeah, but I I don't know. I kind of think we have maybe after this, maybe after doing uh, this, the next one, we then we follow with Requiem. Just so, just rip that band aid off, like right now. Do a recording next month. I don't know. I don't know. It depends what we got going on, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll and figure it out. In, 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 and anyway. the viewers will find out when we post those videos. Yes, they, yes, they will. But, but with that, uh, you know, to, just to wrap this up, uh, yeah, uh, do do at least give uh, this movie this movie one viewing. That's all we that's all we ask for. Yeah, it's not terrible. We've seen terrible on this show before. And I've seen terrible off this show. And so have I. And I've seen stupid off this show. But, eh. <laughs> uh, the whole world is crazy. Yes, people are stupid. <laughs> and, uh, so, uh, including the including the three on here, right here, right here. Yeah, we're crazy and we're stupid. A deadly combination. Only on Mondays. On Mondays, yeah. Oh, yeah, on Mondays. Yeah, I mean, good God. Good God, you got to have something to do on Mondays. Oh, wait. (laughs) It's Monday. It is Monday. At the time of recording this. Yes, at the time of recording. (laughs) Anyway. Yeah. Uh... Uh, thank you again. Thank you again for this random bit of ADHD conversation. For staying very yes. long. <laughs> There's a reason we try to have a format here because if we didn't, we'd just go on and on and on. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe we should. Maybe we should do that. Just something, you know. Just throw th- throw things at the wall, see what sticks. Well, that's gonna be our Karen and work stories. Oh yeah. Uh, our our Karen or our or our customer hostage uh, our our customer phone calls. Ugh, Oof. I sent a story. <laughs> yep. 
anyway. But we'll get to that at some point as well. Yeah, anyway, thank you, viewers, for joining us for this long. And have, uh, have a great rest of, of your days. Um, this is John Murphy. Ian Benoit. Tyler Tyson. Signing off. Thank you.